So as you play around with meta sounds, uh, maybe you're adding a wave player and you've noticed something in your functions called wave writer. And if you've moused over this, you'll see that it allows you to bounce an audio signal to disc or in your DAW, this would be called bouncing. And some of you are probably like, uh, I come to watch your tutorials to figure out how to get sounds into my project, not out of them. Why would I even need this? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna be taking a look at today. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, you'll find a link in the description below. So with that being said, let's get started. So I think it's important to point out that while a lot of you may be using Unreal Engine to create video games, the fact of the matter is the power of Unreal Engine expands so much further than that. From movies, television shows, commercials, anything with any type of CGI or virtual environment to graphic design and things of that nature, these are all applications that can harness the power of Unreal Engine. So while this tutorial may not be something you're specifically looking for, uh, there are a ton of applications where this is absolutely useful. So we're gonna dive in and I'm gonna show you how to set up Wave Rider and kind of show you exactly what it does. And then we'll take a look at some applications where this might be necessary. All right, so I know that I said that I was gonna show you how to set this up and then give you examples of how you would use it but I guess I can't really set this up without also giving you an example of how to use this. So I have set up here uh, just a basic drum machine and uh, I've got some wave players with some claps, uh, hi-hats, kick, snare, things like that. And over here on the end is our wave rider. Now, Wave Rider has been in Unreal Engine 5 since early access, uh, but I believe at the time we only had a mono Wave Rider. With the update of Preview 1, we now have mono, stereo, and up to eight channels. But each one of those nodes is going to have this file prefix here. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to append a file name to that file as it gets saved into your folder. Now you can type in manually what you want that file prefix to be, or you can pull that data from somewhere else. Uh, here I've just got it manually entered and I've got some toggles set up to enable that record. And I'm pulling off essentially my final stereo bus. And that is what it's going to record. So as I trigger all the different drums, it's mixing it all together and it's just spitting out a stereo file. And to give you an idea of kind of the little UI that I set up for it, this doesn't actually move or do anything. I haven't fleshed it out at all. It's just for visual representation on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way here real quick. And we'll shrink Unreal Engine down. And I've got my file folder open here because I wanted to show you where this gets saved. So wherever you have your project files being saved, uh, mine are by default saved in my documents. But if you come under your saved, you'll see uh, once you have recorded a file, you will end up with this audio capture folder. Now I did set this up already and tested it just to make sure that it works and then deleted everything out, but you won't actually see that audio capture folder show up until you've successfully recorded something. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here. And you can see that we've got our user interface. And if I use my one through nine keys, we've got uh, some drum pads. And I've also got this set up so that as soon as I hit my R key, it's going to start recording. And so I wanted to shrink this down so that you can see the folder and see the UI at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit R to start recording, and you can see that it's already creating a file. And so I'll just mash some keys here. And then I'll hit my R key to stop it. 
And so now you can see that that WAV file is there. We have a file size, which means it's a complete file. And we also have the generic metadata that Windows puts in there. Now, I do wanna point out that all of these files are rendered out in a 2448 file resolution. Uh, that's important to note if you're putting this into a DAW to edit later. But once that's complete, uh, we can actually come in here, double click on this file. And you can hear that uh, it saved that file. We can play it back in a media player, some contemporary jazz, or you know, just what it sounds like when I sit behind a drum set anyway. But now we have those files coming out of Unreal Engine. And you can see by the naming of it here, uh, drum recording underscore one. So the drum recording is that prefix that we had put in the meta sound, and then it's saving a version number. And that's really all there is to setting it up. It's very straightforward. Uh, something I do want to point out is I would highly recommend building out your meta sound first and make sure that it works. Make sure if you're triggering anything from your level blueprint that everything works first. Um, if you end up triggering something and causing it to record, you're gonna end up with a bunch of files that you don't necessarily want. And then you've kind of got to go back through and filter those out. So I would highly recommend putting WaveWriter as the very last thing that you implement into your meta sound. So while I showed you one very generic example um, of why you would need to use WaveWriter, you know, maybe you've created an instrument inside your meta sound and you're making some really cool stuff and you're like, hey, I would like to have a recording of this instead of setting up something like OBS or, you know, just a general audio capture, we can just bypass all that and export it right out of Unreal. Another example of where you may use this, let's say you're working on a project with a team and you're actually using Unreal Engine 4 for your project. And because of maybe some plugin limitations or things of that nature, your team hasn't quite upgraded to Unreal Engine 5. But you, as the audio engineer, you've developed some systems inside MetaSound that you really want to get into the game, but Unreal Engine 4 doesn't use MetaSounds. So being able to export these files still allows you to mix and create uh, different variations and things of that nature of your sounds, export them as WAV files, and then import those WAV files into your Unreal Engine 4 project. So the last example, uh, and certainly not the least example, is let's say you're working on a film set and your camera crew might be using Unreal Engine for a virtual production set, kind of like they do The Mandalorian or something. And as the audio engineer on the set, you can actually build out a meta sound and record a live performance of controlling that audio during the filming. So whether this ends up being what's used in the final mix or just something to kind of help aid your audio engineer, this is all certainly useful. So I've got built out uh, some wave players here that, are, that have some looping ambience. One is daytime, one has some birds, and then we have a nighttime ambience. And I've got these all set to uh, these input sliders, which thank you so much for including those. And uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hit play on this. And you can hear that our daytime ambience starts. So we'll go ahead and get a decent level for that. And we can go ahead and hit start record. Maybe that's when the director calls action or you know whatever the case may be. And so our actors are doing their thing. They come across some birds. We can live mix in those birds. And 
now we can maybe they're moving to a nighttime section so we can start pulling those birds back out and slowly bringing down our daytime ambience and mixing in our nighttime scene and because you're filming on a virtual production set shifts like this can absolutely happen So then we've got our nighttime ambience and then the director yells cut. So then we can go ahead and hit stop. And now if we jump over to our file folder, you'll see that we now have a WAV file of that live production. And you can use these things in your DAW for audio post. So there are a lot of different reasons why you might want to export your audio from Unreal Engine out into an actual WAV file. So I hope this was something that you found informative. I know it was a little bit different of a topic uh, than what we typically cover, but it's something that I've been wanting to do a video on since I saw an early access. I just kind of wanted to wait till preview one came out to see if we were going to get any more um, updates to it or, you know, whatever the case may be. So if there is something that you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comments below. Or as I mentioned, you can get a hold of me on the Sound Effects Guide Discord server. Until next time.